in this problem, we have a column that is two and a half meters in height with solid circular cross section and carries an axial load of 300 kilonewtons. If the stress in the column is limited to 25 newtons per millimeter squared, then determine the minimum allowable diameter. In the first instance, we're going to recap the equations we're going to use. First one is stress is equal to force divided by area. The strain is equal to the change in length divided by original length. Young's modulus is equal to stress divided by strain. And Poisson's ratio is equal to minus the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. So for our part one, the stress is limited to 25 newtons per millimeter squared. Using the equation for stress, stress being force divided by area, rearranging this for area, the area will be force divided by stress. Fill in the values we know, so we have 300 kilonewtons on top and 25 newtons per millimeter squared on the bottom. However, we need a consistent set of units, so we need to have newtons on the top. So the number will be 300 kilonewtons, will be 300,000 newtons. Divide that by 25, and that would give us a cross-sectional area of 12,000 millimeters squared. The section is a solid circle. The equation for a area of a circle is given by pi d squared over 4. Or rearranging this for the diameter, we have 4a over pi and take the square root. Fill in the value for our area, 12,000, and take the square root, and that would give us a diameter value of 123.61 millimeters. Part two of this question is to calculate the shortening of the column due to the load. So the length of the column is two and a half meters. So we know this strain is equal to the change in length over the original length. We know the original length, but we don't know the strain. So we need to calculate the strain before we can calculate the change in length. For that, we're going to use Young's modulus, which is equal to stress divided by strain, or rearranging this for strain. The strain is equal to the stress divided by Young's modulus. Fill in the values we know. The stress is 25 newtons per millimeter squared. Young's modulus is given at the bottom of the question. So Young's modulus E is 31,000 newtons per millimeter squared. We have the same units top and bottom so we can calculate the strain value. 8.0645 times 10 to the negative 4. At this point, the strain, I'm actually going to introduce a negative sign because the, it is a compressive load. So therefore, it's going to lead to a shortening in the column. 
So I'm actually going to make that uh, a negative 8.0645 times 10 to the minus 4. Now going to the strain equation. Strain is the change in length over original length. Rearranging this equation for the change in length delta x, that will be the strain times the original length L0. Taking our strain value, minus 8.0645 times 10 to negative 4, and multiplying that by the original length, 2.5 meters, we'll convert that through to millimeters by multiplying by an extra thousand. And that will give us the change in length to be minus 2.016 millimetres. The third part is to calculate the increase in the diameter and for this we're going to use our equation for Poisson's ratio. So for Poisson's ratio it's minus the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. We need to calculate the lateral strain because this is what affects the diameter. Rearranging our equation for lateral strain, it is minus Poisson's ratio times the longitudinal strain. We already have the longitudinal strain. That's the stress in the applied load direction. So it is a value of minus 8.06 4, 5 times 10 to negative 4. Poisson's ratio, if we look back up at the question, Poisson's ratio is given at the very end, value of 0.15. So we can fill Poisson's ratio value in, 0 0.15, and we can work out what the lateral strain actually is. So minus 0.15 times minus 8.0645 times 10 to negative 4. Two minus signs cancel out and we get our lateral strain to be a positive 1.2097 times 10 to the minus 4. In this case it is a circular section so our lateral strain is taken as the change in diameter over the original diameter. Rearranging our equation, change in diameter is equal to the lateral strain multiplied by the original diameter. Fill in the values we know. Lateral strain, 1.20. 9, 7 times 10 to negative 4 and from the answer to part 1 we have the original diameter of 123.61 delta D change in diameter we work that out 0 0.0149 the original diameter is in millimetres, so our change in diameter will also be in millimetres.